after 30 days of fasting, we will no longer have iftar and suhoor. After 30 days of fasting, we no longer will come to listen to the nightly lectures. After 30 days of fasting, I no longer have to count the seconds or the minutes until it's time to eat, until it's iftar time. I no longer have to go and open the refrigerator every day and look at those delicious foods while my mouth waters and I tell myself how many hours left until iftar time. We no longer read dua Abu Hamza Thamali every night. Dua al-iftitah, this beautiful dua. Duas, we no longer recite them on a nightly basis. Finally, I can have breakfast. Finally, I can have lunch. And that's because fasting is over. Why? Because the month of Ramadan has come to an end. And the day of Eid al-Fitr has finally approached, either tomorrow for some or the day after tomorrow for others. And this day, the day of Eid al-Fitr, is a day of celebration, as we know. It's a holiday. But it's a holiday that's different than all the other holidays that we're accustomed to. And that you find in your typical holidays, people spend those holidays partying, drinking, entertainment, fun, relaxing. While the day of Eid al-Fitr is unique, it's different. We don't spend it partying, just having fun and enjoying our time. We spend the day of Eid al-Fitr, we begin our day, this holiday, with remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praying to God and giving charity to the poor. That a Muslim spends his Eid al-Fitr in this way. We all wake up on the day of Eid al-Fitr, whether it's tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. We wake up, we put on our best clothes, we put on cologne, perfume, and we set off to the masjid, to our local masjid. And once we arrive at the masjid, first we pay the charity, zakatul fitra. It's wajib upon every single human being to pay zakatul fitra. Either I pay it if I live by myself, or if I live with someone, the head of the household, my father, has to pay it on my behalf. But it is wajib on every single being to pay zakatul fitra. And if I want to pray Salatul Eid, I have to make sure that I pay zakatul fitra before Salatul Eid. And here it's, it's, uh, it's estimated to be almost $10 per person. The baskets are ready. I just have to take out that amount and place it for each person $10. I place it in the box. So we come to the masjid, we pay zakatul fitra, and then we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We recite, thank you, a few of the dhikr, a few of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then we pray the beautiful salat al Eid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, Qad aflaha man tazakka wa dhakara sma rabbihi usalla. And when we do, when we pray that beautiful Salat al-Eid, which takes about maybe 10 minutes, we recite in the qunut of Salat al-Eid, we recite this dua, Allahumma adkhilni fi kulli khayrin adkhalta fihi muhammadan wa ala muhammad wa akhrijni min kulli su'in akhrajta minhu muhammadan wa ala muhammad. Oh Allah, I ask you, any good, any benefactions, any favors that you gave Muhammad and his family, I ask you to give me of those favors as well. And any harm that you protected, any evil that you protected Muhammad and his family from, I ask you to protect me from that evil and harm as well. This is how we spend Salat al, um, our day of Eid, brothers and sisters. And while we go tomorrow, the day after, whenever my Eid is, while we are riding in our car going to the Eid, let's remember the sermon of Imam Ali alayhi salam. That it's narrated that one day on the day of Eid, he ascended the pulpit and he gave this beautiful lecture. 
He told the people, أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنَّ يَوْمَكُمْ هَذَا يَوْمٌ يُثَابُ فِيهِ الْمُحْسِنُونَ وَيَخْسَرُ فِيهِ الْمُبْطِلُونَ Imam Ali says that this day, the day of Eid, is a day in which the good, the righteous, the pious, those that did their fast, that did their obligation, it's the day that Allah will reward them. It's a day of celebration for them. It's day of, the day of reward for them. وَيَخْسَرُ فِيهِ الْمُبْطِلُونَ But those people that didn't fast, that wasted Ramadan, disobeying Allah, far from Allah, it's the day of loss for them because they have wasted such a great amount of reward, such great gifts that they have neglected and they have wasted. And then the Imam, he says, وَهُوَ أَشْبَهُ وَهُوَ أَشْبَهُ بِيَوْمِ قِيَامِكُمْ The day of Eid, when we're going to pray in the masjid, it's so similar to the day of judgment, the Imam says. Why? Because the day of judgment is the, is the day of reward. It's the day that the good people get the reward, and the bad people, the evil, they will be prevented from the reward. They won't get any reward. They wasted all that reward. So it re resembles the day of judgment. And I'll speak about the reward that the Imam speak about in a few minutes. And then he says, فَذْكُرُوا بُخُرُوجِكُمْ مِنْ مَنَازِلِكُمْ إِلَىٰ مُصَلَّاكُمْ خُرُوجَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَجْدَاثِ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ And he says, when you go to the masjid with your family, everyone, when you arrive at the center, you see thousands of car, cars coming. Everyone wants to park and everyone is rushing to pray. He says, when you come to the masjid, remember the day of judgment. How you get up from your, your rise from your grave and you start moving towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's trial. The day of judgment, we rise from our graves and we just start moving like zombies. Where are we going? We're going towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's trial. We're going to a place so that He can try us. So that the good receive the reward and the evil receive the punishment. He says, when you go to pray on the day of Eid, remember that day. It resembles that day. And then he says, وَذْكُرُوا بِوَقُوفِكُمْ فِي مُصَلَّاكُمْ وَقُوفَكُمْ بَيْنَ يَدَيْ رَبِّكُمْ And when you stand in front of Allah on the day of Eid and pray to Him, Salat al-Eid takes a few minutes, we have to stand and pray it. The Imam says, remember your stand on the day of judgment because on the day of judgment, we're going to have to stand for God knows how long. The Holy Quran says about the Day of Judgment, في يوم كان مقداره How much? 50,000 years. 50,000 سنة. The Day of Judgment is one day, but it feels like 50,000 years. And according to some traditions, we are all standing naked, thirsty, hungry, afraid, tired. Except, of course, except the good believers. That's an exception. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will relieve them of that. So he says, while you're praying to Allah, remember your stand on the day of judgment. And then he says, وَذْكُرُوا بِرُجُوعِكُمْ إِلَىٰ مَنَازِلِكُمْ رُجُوعَكُمْ إِلَىٰ مَنَازِلِكُمْ فِي الْجَنَّةِ And he says, when you finish the salah and you finish everything and you go back home, everyone wants to go back to his house. Remember on the Day of Judgment, after Allah tries us, the believers, how we go to our homes in the paradise, in heaven. So he says, remember, throughout the Day of Eid, remember the Day of Judgment. The Holy Quran says, إِنَّهُمْ يَرَوْنَهُ بَعِيدًا People, most people see the Day of Judgment as if it'll never come. It's so far. It'll come in a billion years. Allah says, وَنَرَاهُ قَرِيبًا But we, I, Allah, I see it so close. It will pass by less than a second ask an old man that lived 90 years how fast did your life go by he'll tell you just yesterday i was a young guy life passes by so fast this entire world will finish before the blink of an eye so this is how we spend the day of eid and that's why it's unique it's not like other holidays we spend it with allah thanking allah for the blessings praying to allah Seeking Allah's guidance, trying to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Imam after that in his speech, and he says, This day there is a gift, there is a prize, 
that Allah will give to all the believers. But what is that prize, you might ask? It's a day of celebration. And any day of celebration, brothers and sisters, there has to be prizes. There has to be gifts. There is no holiday without gifts. And that's why on this day, we're celebrating and there's gifts. But what's that gift that we're all happy about, you might ask? What are we so happy about? Why is it a day of joy? Are we happy that the month of Ramadan finished? Now for some people, they're happy that they no longer have to fast. Some people, they'll just come out and frankly tell you, I'm sick and tired of fasting. Alhamdulillah, no more fasting. That's why I'm so happy. That's why I can't wait until Eid comes. That's why if they tell me Eid is not Thursday, it's Friday, I'll go crazy. Because he wants to eat. It's about the desires. There are some people like that. But that's not why the believers are happy. That's not why we, the believers, joy, are, are joyously celebrating this day. We rejoice, we're happy. Then what are we happy about? The Ram Ramadan is the best month out of the year. Remember we said, Rasulullah said about Ramadan, شَهْرٌ أَوَّلُهُ رَحْمَةٌ وَأَوْسَطُهُ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَآخِرُهُ الْإِجَابَةٌ وَالْعِتْقُ مِنَ النَّارِ the beginning of it is rahmah, mercy. The middle of it is forgiveness. The end of it is Allah answers our dua and He will free us from the shackles of hell. And fasukum fihi tasbih, we breathe, that's ibadah. Wa nawmukum fihi ibadah. When we sleep, Allah counts that as worship. Wa amalukum fihi maqbul. Wa duaukum fihi mustajab. Allah accepts our dua and our amal. It's the best month out of the year. It's the month of mercy and forgiveness. Allah forgives anyone in this month. So why are we happy that this beautiful occasion ended? We should be sad. We should be depressed. And there are some people that I know, brothers and sisters, that on the night of Eid, those true pious mu'mins, those true awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you find that when the night of Eid comes, they're so depressed. They're shedding tears on the night of Eid. Because the beautiful month of Ramadan has finished. This month of seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's satisfaction and guidance and going closer to Allah, the beautiful spiritual atmosphere is gone. And that's why they're so depressed on a night like this. But what are we celebrating? What are we so happy about? It's the prize that we're getting. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he says in the hadith about the prize, he says, Imam al-Baqir, he quotes the Holy Prophet. Imam al-Baqir tells one of his companions by the name of Jabir ibn Abdullah. He tells him, or Jabir ibn Yazid. He tells him, Ya Jabir. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وآله إذا كان أول يوم من شوال. The first day of Shawwal, which is the day of Eid. نادى مناد, an angel makes a call. أيها المؤمنون أغدوا إلى جوائزكم. O believers, come and collect your prize. Your gift. And then the Imam, he says about the hadith, he says, Ya Jabir, Jawa'izullah laysat ka Jawa'izul Muluk. He says, The gifts of God, this prize of God, it's not like your average gift that kings give. Imagine if a king wants to give you the biggest prize, he's going to give you money, he's going to give you property. What is he going to give you? Worthless materialistic items. He says the, the gift of God surpasses all the gifts of all the kings. It's something much higher because it's not materialistic. Imam Ali alayhi salam, in the hadith we were speaking about, remember the day of judgment when you go pray? He finally, he mentions what that prize is and why we're so happy on the day of Eid. The Imam, he says, Ibad Allah, inna adna ma lissa'imina wa sa'imat and yunadihim malakun fi akhir yawmin min shahri Ramadan. He says, Allah will give many prizes. And the smallest of those prizes, the least of those prizes, is that the angel will make a call. And he will say, to all those that did fast, the men that fasted, the woman that did fast on the entire month of Ramadan, and what does he tell them? He says, on a night like this, Abshur or tomorrow, Abshur ibad Allah. Oh, servants of Allah, be happy because I have a message of glad tidings. I have good news for you. What is it? He says, فَقَدْ غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ أو فَقَدْ غُفِرَ لَكُمْ مَا سَلَفَ مِنْ ذُنُوبِكُمْ Allah has forgiven all your sins. You have a clean sheet. It's like you were born on the day of Eid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
has concluded the month with mercy, with forgiveness. And that's why we're so happy. Because Allah has forgiven us. Because for 30 days, we did our best to try to please Allah. Food and water, the most basic necessities of life, we said no to them. Every day for 17, 18 hours, just to please Allah. What do we achieve from that? We achieve piety, taqwa. We fear Allah. We achieve Allah's love and grace. Allah's satisfaction and the great reward of Allah. We said the point of Ramadan is what? The point of Ramadan, the Holy Quran says, fasting, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you achieve taqwa, piety. So you can say no to your desires. I say no to food and water for Allah. So that when haram is presented to me, I have the power, the courage, the strength to resist. I have the willpower to say no. If I left food and water, which are the most basic things and the, the most important of my necessities for God, I can leave everything else for God. I cannot listen to music. I cannot look at haram things. I can refrain from backbiting. I can refrain from anything because I did the most difficult thing. This gives me taqwa. It takes me closer to Allah. So after 30 days of doing that, that we achieve taqwa, now we finally celebrate that we have reaped all these beautiful benefits. But however, brothers and sisters, however, the day of Eid is only a Eid if I did spend the month of Ramadan trying to achieve taqwa. If I did spend the month of Ramadan trying to seek nearness, if I spent the entire month of Ramadan sinning, even though I did fast, I achieved nothing. And that's why Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says in one hadith, إِنَّمَا هُوَ عيد. It's only a Eid for whom? لِمَنْ قَبِلَ اللَّهِ صِيَامَهُ وَشَكَرَ لَهُ قِيَامَهُ It's only a day of, of holiday, of celebration for those people that God accepted their siyam, that He accepted their a'mal. If God didn't accept my a'mal, I have nothing to be happy about on the day of Eid. How? How would God not accept it? If I wasted the entire month of Ramadan sinning. Fast so that you can have the power, the ability to say no to sins. If I fast and the entire month I'm committing sins, I'm defeating the purpose of siyam. I gain nothing. And that's why Imam Ali has been narrated. He says, كم من صائم ليس له من قيامه ليس له من صيامه إلا الجوع والظمع. He says, so many people, they fast the entire month of Ramadan and when the day of Eid comes, all that they have gained is what? جوع والظمع. Thirst and hunger. He just starved himself for an entire month. He didn't achieve anything. Why? Because he spent it sinning. Yes, he's, he doesn't eat, but he doesn't drink, but he commits all the other harams. What's the point? You're supposed to fast so that the goal of that is to stay away from haram. If you are committing haram, then you're defeating the purpose. So it's only a holiday for a person that did what he was supposed to do and achieve taqwa. And then the imam, he says, وَكُلُّ يَوْمٍ لَا يُعْصَ اللَّهِ فِي and every day that we don't disobey Allah, a day passes by that I don't disobey Allah, I don't commit a sin. He says, that's a Eid. That's a holiday. I should celebrate that day because I have achieved such a great achievement. I have accomplished such a great achievement. An entire day passed. I did not commit any sin. The Imam says, this is a Eid for you. You should take your family out and have dinner. Celebrate because you have a reason to celebrate. And this shows us that in Islam, brothers and sisters, if we celebrate something, we have to know why we're celebrating it. We don't just do it because everybody else is doing it. Go and ask an average American, what are you celebrating on Christmas? What is he going to tell you? I don't know. Just everybody else is doing it. My dad did it. My family members are doing it. My friends are doing it. They don't know. It's just a holiday. Just because. He might have had the worst year committing so many sins, but yet when the day of Christmas comes, he's so happy. What are you rejoicing about? Now some of them, some of the faithful, faithful ones will tell you it's the birth of Jesus. But most of them, it doesn't matter who Jesus was born or not. He just wants to celebrate. But what are you celebrating? They don't know. We spoke about this, the jahiliyyah. They used to just do certain rituals and customs without understanding the philosophy. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing what I am doing? They don't use their mind. Islam says, no. You celebrate only if you've accomplished something great. And you accomplish something great by not sinning. If a day passes that I don't sin, this is when I celebrate. Not that, for example, you find someone, he's 50 years old, 
The day of his birthday comes, he wants to celebrate, buy a cake, and brings beer, and he has a birthday party. He's 50 years old with his friends. And he spent his entire year, haram, haram, haram. He's one year closer to the grave, to his death. He should be crying. He should be a day of mourning. But yet he's celebrating. What? He doesn't even know what. So we understand that the only time that we celebrate is if we did what we're supposed to do. If we carried out our obligations towards our master, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why we are so happy on the day of Eid. And let me read you this beautiful hadith from Imam al-Rida alayhi salam. The Imam, he says about the day of Eid al-Fitr, he says, إِنَّمَا جُعِلَ يَوْمُ الْفِطْرِ الْعِيدِ لِيَكُونَ لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ مُجْتَمَعًا يَشْتَمِعُونَ فِيهِ the Imam says that the day of Eid al-Fitr is a holiday. It's a day to celebrate. Why? Why did Allah want us to celebrate? He says so that the Muslims could gather together, possibly in a mosque. So that they can gather together and thank Allah and praise Allah and glorify Allah for all the favors that He gave them. That he gave them this beautiful opportunity, the month of Ramadan, so that they can achieve so much good, so that they can seek nearness to Allah, so that Allah can forgive their sins unconditionally, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards them. We thank Allah on the day of Eid for giving us such a beautiful opportunity. And we thank Him for guiding us and giving us the tawfiq and success of taking advantage of this opportunity. So many people, Ramadan comes and passes by, they don't do anything. If I had the blessings of God, and I had the tawfiq and success of spending the entire month of Ramadan, lectures, ibadah, Qur'an, salah, I should thank Allah that He gave me the guidance to do that. So that's why we thank Allah. And then He says, فَيَكُونُ يَوْمَ عِيدٍ وَيَوْمَ اجْتِمَاعٍ وَيَوْمَ فِطْرٍ وَيَوْمَ زَكَاةٍ وَيَوْمَ رَغْبَةٍ وَيَوْمَ تَضَرُّعٍ So that's why it's a day of paying charity. It's a day of seeking nearness to Allah. It's a day of praying, glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says, this is so interesting, brothers and sisters. And then the Imam says, وَلِأَنَّهُ أَوَّلُ يَوْمٍ مِنَ السَّنَةِ يَحَلُّ فِيهِ الْأَكْلُ وَالشِّرْبِ The day of Eid is the first day out of the Islamic year that we are allowed to eat and drink during the day. Now you might ask, the month of Dhul Shawwal is what month? Of, uh, not Dhul Shawwal, Shawwal. What month is, it, month is it in the Islamic calendar? 10th, right? Ramadan is month 9, like September. So Shawwal is the 10th month, like October. So how does the Imam say that it's the first day out of the year that you could eat? You could have... Muharram 1 is the first day out of the year. That's the first day you could eat. The Imam says, no. The first day out of the year that we can eat during the day is the day of Eid al-Fitr. Why? He says that. He says, لِأَنَّ أَوَّلْ شُهُورَ السَّنَةَ عِنْدَ أَهْلِ الْحَقِّ شَهْرُ رَمَضَانِ he says that the true first month, the first month out of the true Islamic calendar is not Muharram. It's Ramadan. The year begins with Ramadan. And the first day, New Year's Day, is Ramadan 1. We can't eat. So when's the first day out of the year we can eat? The day of Eid al-Fitr. So this adds to the blessing of this day. It's the first day that we can eat together as a family during the day. And then he says, فَأَحَبَّ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمْ فِي ذَلِكْ مَجْمَعْ يَحْمِدُونَهُ فِيهُ وَيُقَدِّسُونَ So Allah wanted us on this day to gather together, glorify Him, praise Him, and pray to Him. This is the day of Eid. This is why we celebrate, and this is how we celebrate this beautiful day. So brothers and sisters, on the day of Eid tomorrow, whether it's tomorrow, or the day after, and I spoke about that topic yesterday of why there is a disagreement between the ulama about the day of Eid. If I still have any misunderstandings, we could still ask and we'll have inshallah tomorrow will be the concluding lecture. We will have a program tomorrow night as well and it will be inshallah a Q&A session. If anyone has questions, we can attend and ask. But if I wasn't here last night and I still have so many, so much confusion about why there is disagreement on the day of Eid. I recommend you to listen to last night's lecture. I explained that in detail. So on the day of Eid, brothers and sisters, let us gather, let us thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us such a beautiful month, the month of Ramadan, for showing us mercy, for forgiving us 
And let's ask him, brothers and sisters, to give us the tawfiq and the ability that we continue whatever we started. That piety that I started, some people go back to their lives as soon as the day of Eid comes. Ramadan comes, I remember, I grew up here, I used to hear in schools, when someone does something haram, hey, don't do that, it's Ramadan. It doesn't matter if it's Ramadan. If it's haram, it's haram 24-7, 365. Even if it's Shawwal, even if it's any other month. Haram is haram. doesn't matter when it is. God can see me throughout the year. Or some others, they say, don't do this. Don't listen to music. It's Ashura. It's, it's Ramadan. This is the wrong mentality, brothers and sisters. Those people, I call them the 40-day Muslims. They're only Muslims. 30 days Ramadan and 10 days Ashura. And 325 days out of the year, they're non-Muslims. They follow their desires. They worship their desires. They only worship God 20, uh, 40 days out of the year. If God wants to be just with us, you see, we always ask for God's mercy. We don't want Him to be just with us because we can't handle God's justice. Such people, God should take them for 40 days out of the year, put them in heaven, and 325 days, put them in hell. If you want Him to be just, 325 days, you did nothing to, to deserve heaven. Okay, for 40 days, you did something. Would, I, would anyone like Allah to treat me like that? So if I came to the lectures, if I attended, if I, some people, they begin to read Quran during the month of Ramadan. Continue. Don't stop when Ramadan ends. The point of Ramadan is to give you taqwa so that it lasts you till next year. So that by the end of next year, when you're losing that piety, the next Ramadan comes and it recharges your spirit again. That's the point of Ramadan. It isn't so that when it finishes, we go back to our lives. Or else we benefited nothing from Ramadan. And that's why in that hadith that Imam Ali, I mentioned the hadith of Imam Ali, he said, Allah will give us a prize, he'll forgive all our sins. He ends it in, with this statement. He says, God, he erases all my sins. He gives me a clean sheet. Then the Imam, he says, don't stain that sheet again. You have a beautiful blank sheet with no sins. Don't stain it. Use your life wisely, your time wisely, don't go back to your old habits. Thank Allah for guiding you and continue on that same path. So we have to try to continue wherever we reached on the, month, on the day of Eid and don't just stop there, brothers and sisters. Continue. Read Quran every day. If you pray during the month of Ramadan, continue praying. If I said no to music, no to some haram, no to backbiting during the month of Ramadan, continue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be even more merciful with us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our a'mal, to consider amongst those, to consider us amongst those that he accepted their siyam. And he gave them that huge prize of his, which is his mercy and his maghfirah and his forgiveness. Imam Zain al-Abideen has been narrated saying that every night during the month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during iftar, every night he frees 70, probably 7 million, he says 7,000 uh, 7, times 1,000, because they don't use million in Arabic back then. So 7 million people every night, Allah, he frees them from the fires of hell, and each one of them deserves hell, but because of his mercy, he lets them go. Every night, this is what happens. The Imam says the last night of Ramadan, which was last night for some of us, which is tonight for the ones that will have the Eid on Friday, tonight is the last night of Ramadan for them. He says the last night of Ramadan, Allah frees as much people as He freed throughout the entire month. So let's say 20 million throughout the entire month. Tonight, just tonight, the night of the last night of Ramadan, He frees that much. That's how important this night is. If Allah didn't forgive me, this is my last chance. Beg Allah to forgive you, brothers and sisters, on this beautiful night. And I shall end my lecture with this beautiful dua for those that will have tonight as the last night of Ramadan. For those that are having Eid tomorrow, tonight is, isn't Ramadan anymore. Tonight is the night of Eid. It's Shawwal already. So for those that their Eid will be on the day of Friday, tonight is the last night of Ramadan. And there's a Dua that's mustahab we read on the last night. I will read it and conclude. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma hadha shahru Ramadan. Alladhi anzalta fihi al-Quran. 
وقد تصرما واعوذ بوجهك الكريم يا رب ان يطلع الفجر من ليلتي هذه او يتصرما شهر رمضان ولك قبلي تبعة أو ذنب تريد أن تعذبني به يوم ألقاك. Brothers and sisters, let's ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us of our sins and let's pray for our family members and our friends. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين.